Hey hey, it's Tom from Audio Ordeal here and I'm going to be showing you a little bit more of React to Core. If you haven't seen my first video on it, go check that out. But basically what we have here is a core module and a bit of simple programming in it. Obviously it looks a bit different to primary, but what it does is it selects out the notes. So currently I have the note middle C and that will play a white noise in the left ear. And then I have the D and that will select a parabolic oscillator and send that to the right ear. You can hear them both, so C, D. Now obviously that's not very applicable to most music, but it allows you to split the notes up differently and send different things, so maybe you want to trigger samples with some notes, trigger noises, or maybe create your own um, drum machine where you're actually synthesizing the different effects and the different instruments. So this is where it comes in really handy. Obviously, I can't show you how to do it if I don't delete this. So this is a core macro. Take one last look before we go, and that's it deleted. And I'll also delete this. Now then, this is the setup. We have a noise oscillator, and we have just a normal parabolic sine oscillator, pretty much. And what I want is when I hit the C note, I want it to kickstart the noise. And when I hit the D note, I want it to kickstart the sine wave. First thing we need to do, figure out what we want to do. So, when the pitch is on C, which is MIDI note 60, we want it to root through to here. And when it's on D, which is 62, we want to root the signal through to trigger this. Now, to trigger each one of these, we need the gate input to send to this one, but not this one, or this one, and not this one. So, let's get started. Let's go straight into a new core cell. And if you haven't used React to Core, it's actually not as bad as you think. Um, you open it up and you've got your default, you need inputs, you need outputs. So let's do that. We need to track the pitch. So let's track pitch. And what are we sending out? Well, we're sending out the trigger for either the noise oscillator or the sine wave oscillator. So let's make two outs, name one of them 60, which corresponds with MIDI note 60 when we hit the C key and 62 when we hit the D key. We don't use 61 because that would be C sharp or D flat. The other thing we need to track is another input, which is the gate in. Now then, we can just connect these up, just like so. And now we need to figure out how we can actually get this to work, where it's looking at the pitch and sending the gate either to this guy or this guy. So how can we do that? Well, the easiest way I found was actually just comparing it to constants. So you take the pitch in, you compare it to 60, and does pitch equal 60? Yes, we'll send gate through. If it doesn't equal 60, pass it on. Does it equal 62? Yes, then send gate through to 62. If not, we can just get rid of the signal because we're hitting the wrong note and we don't need that. So to do this, we can go into built-in module and we can do flow and we can do compare. Now I'll open up two compares and we can have a look at the difference. We've got compare and compare sign. We don't want compare sign because that looks at positive and negative values. So let's get rid of that. Now, this is looking at comparing input one to input two. If input one is greater than input two, it sends out a true. If not, it sends out a false. We don't want that. So we can actually go into the criterion and set it to equals. Now then we want to know is pitch equal to 60? And if it is, that means we're hitting the C key, right? So we can create a constant and we can type in 60. If we hit C and it does match 60, this will send out a true value. So now what we need to do is do a signal flow and we need to do a router. And this is really cool, this one. It takes the triangle input, which is a Boolean so if it matches 60, we're all good, and we can send the gate signal, which is 1 or 0, to the top value. If it does not equal 60, the gate will move on to the next stage and come out here for further processing. Now then, we can just duplicate this. So let's duplicate. And we're looking at the pitch again. So this time we want to know, does it equal 62? So let's type that in, 62. Does the pitch equal 62? If yes, we will send the gate, which is here, out to 62. If not, 
it will just go into the void. It will disappear forever and we'll never need to see it again. Right? That's as simple as it needs to be. So now we can just tidy things up and let's just check our routing, right? So imagine I'm hitting C, right? Pitch will send a value of 60. It will match 60, ring true. The gate will get sent through here and to the top output and we can connect 60 to here and the gate will trigger noise. If on the other hand, we press the D key, the pitch will come in through both of these, false on here, so the gate signal will go through here. And if it's true on here, the gate signal will come out and go to 62. So we can match 62 to the amplitude there. Finally, what we need to do is figure out if we hit G. So we'll go in, it won't match this, it won't match this, and so it will just get sent out there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create a constant and let's just type 62 here, just so we can hear it. Let's give this a test. So hitting the C key, hopefully it routes through here and sends the gate signal to the noise. It does. Now I'm going to hit the D key, hopefully it routes through here and sends the gate signal to the oscillator here and not the noise. It does. Brilliant. Now that's a really simple example of core. Um, I'd recommend we rename this uh, to routing pitch, for example, and then you can just right click and save it. This is really good for things where you're not needing the pitch values so much. Um, so for example, if you're mapping over C to C, uh, drum machine, you want the kick on the C, the snare on the D, hi-hats on like F sharp, A sharp, whatever. Um, you can do all that and then you can create your own custom like drum synthesizers and map them to each of these. Um, that's one way of doing it. The other thing, if you want to play about with samplers, this can sometimes be helpful, but it's really something to just try out yourself and figure out, try and, try and go and do this from scratch without referring to the video first and then refer to this video if you don't get it. It's a good wee puzzle and it helps you learn core programming. Hope that was helpful for you and thank you very much for watching.